today I'm heading to Osaka, but right now I'm in New York. Um, flight connections are weird. So I'm in JFK Airport, just waiting for my uh, connection to Kansai International. It's going to be a four hour layover. I thought about exchanging some currency, but I looked at the rate and it was they wanted to like cut my money in half, so I'm going to pass on that. Um, see if I regret that later. Kind of boring here being on a four hour layover of, uh, in New York City. I'm sure there are a million other things I could do, but uh, I'm stuck here, unfortunately. I'm just really bored. I wish there was something to do. I mean, you can only go to the bathroom so many times. You know? So, after almost 48 hours of uh, travel, I finally have made it to my Japanese apartment. Uh, this is my room. I'm just going to fill you in a little bit on some things that I left out of the video. Uh, the flight itself was pretty cool. Um, entertainment was top notch. They had a ton of movies that were still in theaters available to watch on a little TV screen in front of me. Another thing that was really good was the food. Uh, I flew China Airlines so I got to eat really good Chinese food and uh, that was really exciting. One thing that people tend to overlook or not think about so much is the actual route of the flight. You would think coming from the east coast of the United States to get to Japan you would just fly west all the way across the Pacific but that's actually not what they did. They took a sort of a global traversal efficiency route where instead of flying directly across the diameter of the earth you fly up toward the North Pole just above Canada and then you come back down on top of Japan and the reason being for that of course is that the earth is not as big around at the top as it is at the bottom so you fly up to the top and then you come back down on Japan and you save about 2,000 miles so my flight could have been 15-16 hours but it ended up being only 13. Um, the thing that sucked most about the flight was definitely space. I had none of it. So basically, uh, immediately after landing in Japan, I went to a counter where they uh, took my passport and made me a gaijin card. It's basically like a foreign registration card. I have to carry it around all the time. It's my ID here in Japan. After that, I didn't really have anywhere to go. I got there in the night and I was really tired, so I began hotel searching. Um, I ended up staying in a really small hotel room, uh, Best Western, in Japan. Um, the room was pretty good, small, and the next morning I took a train and headed up here to Osaka. As far as the exchanging money goes, um, definitely don't need to exchange money before you get to Japan. The exchange rate uh, here was much better. So yeah. Here I am, in Japan, ready to go on some adventures and eat some good food and make some videos, hopefully. So, I will see you all next time, after I've rested up a little bit. And, uh, thanks for watching.